Today's gospel reading is quite long, and it tells the interwoven stories of two women. From Mark chapter 5, beginning at verse 21. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side of the lake, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him. The large crowd, large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who'd been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She'd endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She'd heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, If I but touch his clothes, I'll be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Jesus said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overwhelmed with ama amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Two women in trouble. One, a young teenager close to the point of death, and the other, a mature woman who'd suffered from hemorrhages for 12 years and from the intrusive and unhelpful intervention of many physicians. For both of them, life is fragile, brutish and short. The younger woman has a devout synagogue going father who asks Jesus to help his daughter. The other who's despised and outcast because of her ritual uncleanness, cowers on the edge of the crowd alone and hoping for some miracle from the rabbi. Jesus enters the stories of both women and brings restored life and new beginnings. He does not ask questions or check on the religious orthodoxy of these women. He appears to have little interest in the backstories behind each situation. He simply sees and intuitively feels what is going on and he acts with compassion to bring life and healing. The women are very different in age, social class and access to help. But they have in common a deep need for restoration, which it seems can only come from divine intervention. As usual, the gospel according to Mark crafts these two stories together so that each illumines the other. And the author of the gospel uses a characteristic technique to weave the narrative, the so-called Markan sandwich. After the excitement of Jesus stilling the storm and calming the waves in last week's gospel, 
Mark goes on to tell the strange story of how Jesus heals a demoniac, a demon-possessed man, by driving the demons from the man into a nearby herd of nearly 2,000 pigs. Pigs, the most unclean of animals for devout Jews. And then he drives the pigs to plunge over a cliff and drown in the sea. So Jesus not only calms the wind and stills the raging waters, but he also controls the demonic forces that terrify people by sending them into the unclean animals and then into the dangerous and unpredictable sea. Mark portrays Jesus in these stories as powerful over the most dangerous and threatening situations. And in today's gospel, Mark's focus changes. And in these stories of the two women, we see a compassionate Jesus who responds to the domestic sadness of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue, and to the personal pain of the woman with the issue of blood. The first focus, Jairus' daughter's story, begins with the faith of Jairus, who begs Jesus to help. Jesus goes with him to the house to see what he can do for the daughter. And as he goes, a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. And now we have the second story, the filling in the sandwich, the story of the woman with the hemorrhage. She approaches Jesus from behind in the crowd so that she will not be noticed. She's too unclean to ask anything of this rabbi but she believes that if she can just touch his clothes, she may receive healing power. Like Jairus, she is full of desperation. But unlike Jairus, she has no position in the community, no right to ask anything of Jesus. She just thinks, if I but touch his clothes, I'll be made well. She does touch his cloak, and again, using a characteristic mark and word, she is healed immediately. Mark tells many of his narratives with the story of next or soon or immediately. He has a great sense of immediacy or urgency, amplifying his message that salvation is at hand. And Jesus' response to the woman's touch is also immediate. Who touched my clothes, he asks. The disciples think that he must be kidding. See the crowds pressing in. How can you say you touched me? Nevertheless, the woman comes forward and acknowledges that it was she who touched him. He calls her daughter and commends the faith that has enabled her healing. And then the journey to Jairus' house and the story of the young girl resumes. The second piece of bread in the mark and sandwich is in place. It seems to everyone that the daughter has died, but Jesus reassures Jairus that she's just sleeping. Into the midst of the crowd of friends and relatives mourning and weeping because of the untimely death of the girl, Jesus arrives again as a non-anxious presence and proceeds to raise her from what everyone else believes is death. To the amazement of the crowd of mourners, she walks out of her room and Jesus suggests with amazing practicality that she needs to be given something to eat. So, in today's Gospel, Mark gives us two daughters, both experiencing a kind of death, who are restored to new life by the compassionate Jesus. Furthermore, his actions in these two narratives are both a continuation of his remarkable authority over the wind, the sea, and evil spirits, and even death, but also describes simple domestic authority too. Jesus cares for the micro-situations, just as he exhibits his authority in the wider narratives. The sandwich story of Jesus' love for these two daughters of Israel is challenging because he is restoring life where life and hope have failed. His actions are simple, direct, and wholly focused on the needs of the two, the two women. This is itself extraordinary in first century Palestine. Who would bother with two needy women? But Jesus wants the disciples and the others involved to keep quiet about this work. These signs of authority and demonstrations of personal healing love could easily overwhelm Jesus and become the signs and wonders distraction that inhibit the fulfilment of his mission. 
Jesus has come to proclaim that the kingdom of God has come here. This is the meta-narrative, which is both reinforced by these stories, but can also be derailed by too much focus on signs and wonders. We know too how easily our own faith journey can be derailed by our own need or false expectations or by overzealous religiosity. Jesus' words spoken so long ago into the lives of these women still speak with power and authority into our own fragile lives and shattered hopes. Do not fear, only believe. Let me pray with you now the collect for today. O Christ, for whom we search, our help when help has failed. Give us courage to expose our need and ask to be made whole, that being touched by you, we may be raised to new life in the power of your name. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love, today and always. Amen.